Y'all, can we just have a round of applause for America right now? A big old round of applause for the pioneers, for the settlers that came over here and carved out a nation straight through the wilderness, straight through this stuff right here. They fought cold, they fought hunger, they fought, fought disease, famine, Indians, colonial pressure, all this kind of stuff just to make it happen. We had a huge moral problem. We had wars with the Indians. We had wars with their lands. Um, it got really, really bad at times. We had slavery. We had lots of stuff wrong, but we did a lot of stuff right. But now that we've finished our little game of Sim City, if you look at an American map now, it seems to all be filled in. What's next? Because there ain't no money in exploration or adventure anymore. So we put all our money in the wrong things. So you'll never see big pharma die out because there's too much money in it. You'll never see the cigarette business die out because there's too much money in it. You'll never see racism die out because there's too much damn money in it. I think it's human nature to grind, but what happens when you have ancestors that were so badass that they removed 99% of your problems for you? Life is good, y'all. See, this is where this woke culture and all this kind of stuff comes from. People got so bored that they wanted to see the, the whole script flipped upside down. It's all for entertainment. Now, don't let any of this virtue signal and BS fool you one bit, y'all. They're making a ton of money off this stuff. The woke school books, right? The prescription drugs, the rallies, the foundations, the funneling of money directly to people who simply just want to watch the world burn. I've been praying through this a couple years now, and as I'm starting to do this, I'm really starting to believe that maybe God needed America to have these problems. Maybe he let America go through these hard times for a reason. I think the reason is he knew it would invoke the true warrior's instinct that would take over and pretty much arouse a spirit that we hadn't seen in this country in 245 years. Now I'm gonna get excited here because I'm gonna talk US history. You know I get fired up about that. There is no story at all that can touch what Lewis and Clark did when they were going to try to find a route to the Pacific Ocean in 1805. Thomas Jefferson commissioned this expedition for Lewis and Clark after the Louisiana Purchase, all right? He wanted to find a route to the Pacific because the, the map was completely empty, pretty much west of St. Louis. They had no idea. They were just wondering and fantasizing about what the hell was actually out there. So Jefferson found the two biggest badasses alive. It was Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Best two he needed. He said, commission an expedition, take a whole bunch of people with you, make all your provisions, study everything, and know how to survive and go out there and find a route to the Pacific Ocean. Now, this is incredible. Listen to this. See, William Clark, he had a slave on the expedition who started out as just a slave, but by the time they reached the uh, Pacific Ocean, he turned into a whole lot more than that. See, his name was York, and uh, he was basically considered property of Clark. Now, let's backtrack a second here. The expedition spanned 8,000 miles. They risked hunger, starvation, um, all these different things. They were on the verge of, of war with different Indian tribes almost every dadgum week. So on November 15th, 1805, something incredible happens. They actually reached the Pacific Ocean. Can y'all even imagine how that felt? There was 45 people, including Lewis, including Clark. There was about 27 unmarried soldiers. There was a uh, French Indian interpreter. There was a contracted boat crew and then there was York. Now something happens in the human spirit when you risk your life getting killed, almost starving, and weak and beyond measure. All these kind of things going on, and it pushes you to a point where almost nothing else matters but camaraderie. They were family. Lewis and Clark held a vote to decide where the expedition was going to camp for the winter time. And guess who was allowed to vote for the first time ever? You guessed it, York. See. None of the other principles and the stuff mattered of what 1805 was like back in Virginia because these men had crossed the entire continent from right to left and they survived and they let the man vote. They honored his humanity. And I think we really need to get back to that. I think that God lets our country go through hard times because he knows if we go through these hard times, all the gaps start getting filled in. All the nonsense doesn't matter anymore. See, all this new age ideas, getting forced down our throats, all the desperate attention, all the uh, seeking new fads and all these things, they're just designed for self-worship and the individualism, which has always been and will always be purely satanic. So maybe God allowed these hard times and even harder times to come because it's only then 
we can serve a purpose bigger than our own selfish ambition and stop screaming for attention for once in our lives as a society. I'm really proud for everybody who's getting back to this attitude. I really feel like it's a rising sentiment here in this country and it's a beautiful thing. Keep it going. God bless you. This will be my last video for 2022. So I'll see you next year.